Hey, good morning. How are you all doing? I hope you're all having a great Thursday. Uh, it's good to see you guys and gals. Uh, today we're going to be making a nice little fancy duck dish today. So I've got a whole duck, which we're going to take apart. So I'm going to show you how to take the legs, the breasts off. Uh, we're going to use the carcass as well to make a nice rich stew or cur uh, curry, <laughs> gravy. Uh, so we're going to be do using that. Um, for Also on the duck dish, we're going to be using the um, duck breast. I'll keep the legs for next week so we can do a duck. I say duck dish, but probably uh, duck spring rolls ready for next week. So we'll do them. Um, but for the duck breast, we're going to use today. We're going to serve it with uh, parsnip crisps. Uh, we're also going to do a celeriac uh, puree or celery root puree. Uh, we're also going to do um, sprouts, bacon, and a little bit of lemon juice. And we're also going to do a potato croquette as well. Flour, egg, and breadcrumb. Ooh, actually, have I got breadcrumbs? Maybe not. What I might do instead, because we already got bacon on the dish, just change that to a nice little creamy mashed potato. So um, I'll have a little play around with that today. So, But hope you guys are doing great. And uh, it's lovely to see everyone here this morning. You can see here. Can you see like in between where the, the leg parts from the from the breast to the leg? So we want to kind of cut down there, like exactly like the chicken. So let me do the left side first. So pretty much you want to follow that round. Um, cutting around here, if you have a little bit of trouble with the, the winglet, just kind of pull him out a little bit. Um, and then what you want to do is just dislocate the leg. What do you mean by it? Pop it out the socket, so like so. So you just pop it out the socket and you should have like the chicken have the oyster here if I'm if I'm not corrected so yeah kind of the same not as not not doesn't look the same as the oyster but it's a little it's very a lot smaller than the chicken I would say and then we just got to follow the knife all the way around and then you've got your your cheeky chicken le uh, chicken legs duck legs sorry right so we're gonna get the winglets off so the winglets dead simple dead easy so you see where the joint is? I don't know if you can see this here. Let me let me turn it a bit. So can you see where the joint is right here? You want to cut straight through that joint. And your knife shouldn't you shouldn't have any troubles with it. If so, just move it over and just cut it straight through. It should cut through like uh, I say butter, but sometimes it can be a little little tricky. So just cut straight through the joint. Just literally a little bit off center from where that line is. You want to start cutting down and then just kind of following the, the bone and the, the, the breast. So once you hit the bone, you want to start turning the knife to the side a little bit. <laughs> and then just kind of making sure you peer it out. <laughs> Beautiful. And then you just kind of follow it down very nicely. Oh, do you know what I have forgotten to do? Do you know what I have forgotten to do? Apologies, guys. The wishbone, which is probably one of the first things you want to do. So I did forget, but it's okay. So what you want to do is put your knife in there and just kind of scrape the bone so you can uh, reveal it. So I'm not too late in doing it, so we can still do it, which is good. I almost forgot about that cheeky fellow. Right, so you should reveal the wishbone. And what you want to do is just pretty much be very careful. Just kind of peer it out. And then it should pop out like so. So there you go, I didn't even snap it, break it. So there's the wishbone. Follow the other side, exactly the same. So making sure you haven't got that wishbone in, Kappa. And you just want to follow that meat round on the carcass as well. Um, I'm going to take some of the excess fat off because I don't want my jus or gravy to be too fatty. Uh, absolutely soaked in, in, in saturation. So, I mean, I do want some fat in there. But uh, duck can be very, very fatty. So I'm just going to take some of the excess off. Like I said, with that neck, we're going to use for the sauce as well. So I'm just going to take that off as well. Right. So you want to hack it down with the knife, like so. So pretty much just snap the back in half. So it should all pretty much come out. Just going to give it a little twist. Oh, hang on. I haven't cut it cut, cut quite through the bottom. Hold on a sec. So you just want to hack it and then just let me get around this little part here. There we go. And then you just want to give it a twist, and it should just come off, like so. There we go. We're going to get this roasted off. Let me wash my hands first. Uh, we're going to set the oven on to 350 Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius. It's going to go in straight in the oven. Uh, we can use the winglets as well, so there's a little bit of fat on here, but that's fine. So I'm not going to use the winglets for anything. I mean, I suppose you could comfy them down and whatnot, but, you know, I'm going to put this into the stock. Oh, and also, 
Also, the, the, the little fatty neck. I'm just going to take the fat off this because this is quite a lot of fat for the neck. So, let me just trim this off. And it should just come straight off. It's not really that difficult. So, as you can see. So that's a, that's a considerable amount of fat right there. So the neck is going to add a lot of flavor to the sauce. So we're going to stick that in there as well. Is stick the fat in here. And once we've got like quite a considerable fat, I'll drain it off. Um, take the, the bones out, obviously. Put them in the stock. And then any excess that I can't get out, I'll just wipe out. And then we can deglaze the pan. That sounds like a great idea. The wishbone as well. Pop that in there. And then the fats. So yeah, let's pop the fat all in here. I'm going to render it down. We'll keep it for the uh, roast potatoes for Wednesday next week. What a great idea. Thank you, amigos. It's going to take about 40, 50 minutes. Let it really kind of roast down really nicely. Um, and giving it a good hour to really render that fat, roast off those bones, get all those beautiful flavors starting to uh, materialize. There's quite a bit of fat left on here. So what we're going to do, just really just carefully trim this up. So... There we go. So I'm going to put this into the stock in there so that can render down for more fat again, So, which is great. Basically, we're going to score this. So we're going to cut into the fat. Um, so what you want to do is pretty much just pinch it with your, your thumb and your, your index finger. Just pinch it slightly and don't go too deep with it. All we're doing is just basically scoring it. We don't want to go into the meat, just into the fat very gently. So... Just gonna score that up now some people score it differently I've seen people as well score it crisscross um, you know you can do however you want I'm just gonna cut it or score it just with the one lines just like so um, so there we go that's all we need to do for prepping the, the duck breast so this is celery root or as I like to call it celeriac whichever you prefer to call it you know whatever takes your fancy so we're gonna cut this up this is for my celeriac puree so what we're going to do, top and tail. What I'm going to do is grab myself um, a beautiful peeler. I'm going to peel it down very, very nicely. So watch your fingers. Careful you don't peel yourself. Pan. Just drop these in. And we're going to cover these in milk. And you think, oh, milk? It's actually going to make it, because we're making a puree out of it, make it nice and creamy. So. We're actually going to use some milk to submerge it. I'm going to cook it down in. So let me move that out of the way so you guys can see. <laughs> Beautiful. We top this up with milk. It's good to go. So we're going to pop this onto the stove on a low heat. Uh, this is going to cook down for about an hour, maybe two. Just keep an eye on it. If you need to top it up, if it's losing liquid instead of wasting more milk, you can top it up with a touch of water. Um, if it's evaporating too quickly, so. Uh, just keep an eye on it. Careful it doesn't overflow as well. The thing is, when you boil milk, it does froth up. So just keep it on a simmer, on a low simmer. So it shouldn't shouldn't froth up too much. Right, let's, uh, we don't need to dice this down. We can just cut this up. This is for the, the duck stock. So just roughly, don't need to be too crazy with it. So let's dice this up very nicely. <laughs> using the, so we're going to crush the garlic up using the back, the, the side of your knife. Now, carefully you don't have the blade pointing upwards because that will really hurt, right? Making sure the blade's not pointing right down because you'll damage the blade. So you want it kind of uh, horizontally, but just push down a little bit. So using the, the heel of your hand, that's it. That's all you need to do. And it'll crush down very nicely. So just be very careful with that. It can be very dangerous if you don't do it correctly. Right, let's cut this down. Watch your fingers. So just rough chop. You don't need to go too crazy. There we go. So we've got the onions, the garlic. Uh, the pan is on. We also got those celery roots from the celeriac or celery, not celery root, isn't it? So the leaves, we're going to use them, which is pretty much celery. The duck legs, these are not for today, but I'm actually cooking them down ready for Monday. So I'm doing comfy duck legs ready for duck spring rolls on Monday. Um, and then we're going to, once they cool down and they've, they've cooked through, um, I'm just going to leave them submerged. A little smidgen of oil, or oil I've got left from putting in there. So this is vegetable oil or canola. You don't want to go too crazy with it. About a tablespoon is what we're looking for. So onions, garlic, carrots, the whole shebang. It's all going in. It's all going in. We're going to get a nice little bit of caramelization on those, on those veggies. Um, also going to chuck in a bay leaf as well. 
Let's grab a bay leaf from the cupboard. So the duck has been in for about a good good hour. And already, can you see all that that comfy fat? Look at that. All that beautiful duck fat ready to go for uh, for Wednesday for our uh, roast potatoes. Amazing. So let's move this across. So what we're going to do is my, du my duck carcass. It's the neck. That's the fat. We don't want the fat. So the fat's been rendering down. I'm going to keep this fat. That's going to be for the roast potatoes for Wednesday. Let me just get rid of that grease now. So I don't want this to be a, um, a, a greasy stock. I want it to be flavoursome and clean. So we can make a nice, beautiful gravy out of it. Um, I've also got my chicken stock from leftover from yesterday, which I will probably chuck in there as well. Right, so it's going to pop this onto the stove. So it's going to let that heat up very nicely. So we're just going to use a little bit of water. Just to help kind of deglaze that pan very nicely. Let's get all that beautiful flavours in there. If that's a little bit hot, grab your, your towel. It's not too bad for me, so I'll be okay. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah. I'm going to reduce this down. Now, when it comes to stocks and sauces, right, you want to kind of try to avoid boiling your stock. Why is that, Chef? Well, I'll give you two reasons. Um, according to Anthony Bourdain, who's an absolute legend, um, obviously he's passed away now, and it's very sad because he used to be a big legend in, in the cooking industry. He always said boiling stocks uh, would, number one, flatten the flavor, and second of all, which is kind of not really for household use, but for more for restaurant use, um, it would make the, the stock cloudy. So, to be honest with you, I've always, I've always very gently simmered my stocks, um, so you get a fuller, fuller, richer flavor. Um, what we're gonna do? These are quite large parsnips as well. So if they were quite small, it wasn't so bad. But I can, I can utilize this. It's not a problem. So they're a little bit dry on the outside. So I'm gonna top and tail them, so they're a little bit more fresher, shall we say? Hey, chef, what the hell is a parsnip? It's a parsnip. <laughs> Uh, being British, we have quite a lot of parsnips, but they, you guys do have them over here in the US. I suppose it depends on where you live and the availability. Um, what are they like? They're very earthy, but they, they have a, a... It's like a unique flavor, but a touch of sweetness to them. But yeah, it's very earthy and can be sweet uh, to an extent. Um, and if you, you can, they pair very well if you add like, a little bit of honey to roast off with. Um, and it goes quite very well, but I, I'm not a big fan of the honey parsnips. I never have been. I've tried them, and they're just they're just far too sweet for me. Um, and what we're going to do? We're going to decor them. So if you've never decored them before, I mean that's fine. You can still eat the middle. I find the middle very like fibrous and tough, um, not quite as pleasant to have. So I always take them out. I mean that's optional. If you want to take them out, you can do. Um, so what you want to do is cut them in half, so like you got got a quarter. And what you want to do is just basically. Cut at an angle so you're removing that kind of root or majority of it. I mean, if it's not all removed, that's fine. But as long as the majority is removed, that's okay. And I'm just going to cut these into nice little kind of uh, chip size parsnips. So, let's remove that. Whoa! <laughs> Doing tricks now, chef. <laughs> so, let's pop my parsnips in. I don't really want to overfill this. I feel like we can just about stick them all in here. So, we should be good with this. So, there's our parsnips. Uh, in our roasting tray, ready to go. I'm going to add um, that beautiful duck fat we've got here. We've got some here for ready for Wednesday. I'll keep that. I'm going to use this. and Probably not all of it, but let's have a, a good amount in there. Yeah, why not? There we go. Duck fat is going in. That's fine. So a good old pinch of salt in there as well. All right. So uh, we're going to take the ends off. And the best way to cook these as well, because... Um, if you don't score the bottoms, what will happen is when you boil these, right, what will happen is the tops will cook and the bottom roots will stay hard. So you'll have a crunchy, crunchy bot root and then like an overcooked top. So um, you want to kind of score the bottoms just so they cook through nice and evenly. So this is why we, we whenever you see like a sprout uh, scored like crisscrossed at the bottom, it's just to open up the, the root so it cooks nice and evenly when you do cook the sprout. So there you go. Tips and tricks of the day. Magic. So for these, um, don't ever wash mushrooms or uh, fungi or anything like that because they'll soak the water up. Bad, bad move. Don't ever do that. Um, you can brush them off. 
or you can get a damp cloth. Now, because there's soil underneath the the chanterelle, I'm going to brush them off. So, uh, but you can get a damp cloth or kitchen roll and just dab them, dab them clean. But don't ever wash them. It, it, you know, it's it's pretty much a schoolboy error. You you don't want to be soaking these in water, unless it's kind of going in the soup. I suppose it, it really won't matter, but. You know, especially for these, which are going to be frying off in butter and stuff. So, you know, you don't want that kind of, uh, it soaking up extra moisture. I'm going to get my potato. Let's get my potato uh, on the go. I'm not making a huge deal of mashed potato, by the way, because I've only got one. And second of all, I don't need a lot of mash. So, uh, let's... I've already washed this yesterday, so I don't need to wash it again. But yes, uh, wash your potatoes down and then give them a peel. I'm going to dice this down into a small dice. Am I kind of running out of pan? room pan i am a bit so once those sprouts are done i'm gonna put the potatoes on so um so i'm gonna dice this down into a small dice the smaller you dice it the quicker it's gonna cook right so um the the larger you have the cuts the the longer it's gonna take to cook the potato down so just bear that in mind when you're cutting your potatoes and chop up some bacon for the the sprouts right so not really lard ones. i'm gonna kind of really nice little kind of dice of bacon so very small lard ones shall we say so so those sprouts aren't too far off so um i could actually get them into a don't really need to put ice to be honest with you i've got nice cold water here because it's pretty cold outside so i'm just gonna drain the sink off for when they're ready i'm gonna drop the uh, shells as well in the last 30 seconds so we'll see how far they're they're being done they're not gonna be too far off yeah so that's gonna come up to a boil we're gonna add a little touch of salt to the um What's it called? To the potatoes. So I'm just going to drain this off very nicely. Beautiful. Right, I'm just going to give this a wash up because I'm going to need a pan. What am I going to need a pan for? Something. I don't know. I can't remember now. But it's okay. Let's put this in the sink. Ready? Um, so we're going to drain that off. Keep the milk. And what we're going to do is pop this in here to blend down. If we can't put it all in there, which I feel like we probably can. Um... Yeah, we'll be able to fit it in there. Just do a little bit at a time, but that's fine. So. Whee, chef. Don't go too crazy. Not too much, though. I don't want it to be, like, super... As I said before, don't want it to be, like, super uh, rich. But it does could do with a little touch more. Just strain this off. So we strain the stock. That's good to go. Uh, so that beautiful stock is looking fantastic. We're just going to pour that straight back into the pan. I'm going to put this back on the heat to reduce. Um, and then we're going to start making a roof for it very shortly. So let's drain this off. Now when it comes to mashed potatoes, right, one of the most like kind of important things to kind of bear in mind and remember um, is to make sure you don't overcook it. Because how do you mean like overcook it? So you'll know if it's overcooked is when the water starts to turn like a cloudy color. That's showing that the potatoes are breaking down. Um, it's going too far. Uh, and you can't get the liquid out of the potatoes and it will be too slushy. So once you've drained them off, pop them back into your pan. And what we're gonna do is basically pop that onto the stove just to dry out those potatoes. Um, still, a, still a very hot heat there. So just literally for a couple of seconds, don't burn them. You just wanna give it a quick little mix. Uh, just to kind of dry them out so you can see already they're starting to go fluffy. That's what we want. Just them to start going fluffy just to get that extra moisture out and they're good to go. So there you go. Already done. So I'm not making a huge deal of mash. It's just literally a uh, small amount. So we got for the garnish for our duck dish. All right, so. so let me get my masher. So that's been riced. Uh, here it is. And what we're going to do is our butter and milk that we had earlier on on the stove. Which is basically just a nice little kind of, I wouldn't say emulsion as such, but more of the melted butter into the milk. So it's good to go. So that's going straight in. And we're just going to give that a really good mash down. You know, you don't have to make a, a job difficult for yourself. Just make it easier. I must be psychic. <laughs> that's what I call timing. All right, so let's flip them over. Give them a nice little little toss so they're just cooking down very nicely in this duck fat that we rendered down from the, the fat this morning so 
They do need a little touch longer. They're not going to be too far off. We just want to crisp them up nicely. But I tell you what, they're going to be very delicious. I mean, they might have Marmite out there, but I know what they're like. They were, they'd rather use their, their uh, disgusting Vegemite, right? Rather than the true British way. <laughs> oh, I'm only joking. So, a bit of flour in here to make the roux. You don't want to go too crazy. Now, you want to make the roux so it's almost like a sandy texture, pretty much. Um, you don't want to be like going too, too like kind of dry with the with the roux, but you know, yeah, maybe a touch more, maybe a touch more flour in there, not too much. But you just want like a sandy kind of texture. That's what you're looking for. Because if it goes too dry, then we're gonna add more butter and we're gonna be making more sauce, and then yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, here we go. So now it's starting to look like a sandy texture. We're just gonna cook that out for a minute. So cook out that roux. <laughs> oh, I love the banter. It's great. Um, what we're going to do is going to start adding the duck sauce uh, or the stock to the, to the roux and start cooking it down. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to turn this off because that doesn't need to reduce down too much more anyway. So, yeah, if you add this, the liquid all at once, what's going to happen is you'll end up with lumps in your gravy and you're not going to be very happy. So, trust me, it's just worth waiting. Um, be patient with it. Skin down. And you'll be like, Chef, don't you need oil in it? No. The fat will render down, which will create the oil. So you do not need to add any oil when it comes to cooking duck. Because there's enough fat in the skin. So I'm going to season the top as well. It's looking very duckalicious. Nice, beautiful, crispy skin. bit of cheeky baste. That's going to go in the oven for about seven minutes and if it needs a little couple of minutes longer that's fine and then we're going to give it a rest. Straight into that pan is going to be our cheeky little smoked bacon. Just prop some of those cheeky sprouts in. Fair game. Leave a few for my wife as well. So, I hope I got no cuts on my fingers, but we'll soon find out. Nice, rich, beautiful stock. Uh, gravy. Oh my god. That is so good. Minute. I feel like it's going to need longer. I'm not going to lie. That was a really big duck breast we took off the, the carcass. So we might need to take another four. But we'll see. We'll see how it's looking. Yeah, I'd say we're good. Nothing more than that. I'm not going to give it an extra minute. That's good to go. So, there's our beautiful duck breast. Look at that. Look at that delight. Delicious. So, it should be nice and pink inside. I'm going to let that rest for a couple of minutes. And we should be good. make weird food for your wife as well yeah that's correct but she'll have fresh when she comes home so um it's always been the same oh a baby look at that nice nice and medium how we wanted it very nice just wanted a tinge of pink and look what we got we got a tinge of pink beautiful a little thicker. That's what I call perfect cooking. What we're, what we're talking about here. Oh my god. <laughs> what happened to this drill? Um, chanterelle, sorry. Like all over the place a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
I love a bit of the shakes today. What's going on? Why have we got the shakes today? I have no idea. There we go, amigos. There is our duck dish. So let's have a little dive in to see what we've got. So there's our seared duck breast with celeriac puree um, underneath. We've got creamy mashed potato. We've got the uh, sprouts cooked down with smoked bacon, um, lemon juice, chanterelles, um, and we made a homemade gravy, or jus, shall we say, from the, the, from the duck bones itself. Um, and also the crispy parsnips that we cooked down in duck fat as well. So uh, that's pretty much it. I think I haven't missed anything. I hope I haven't missed anything. Let's, uh, let's hope so. Um, have a great rest of your... <laughs> have a great rest of your Thursday. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, with that banana meal for, you for the $10 meals. Guys and gals, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for all the support. I'll see you soon. Bye for now, guys and gals.